is so good. Ready? God is so good. Well, it's a blessing to be here tonight. Amen. Good to see all you amazing people. Get your Bible. Turn to the book of Psalms. Actually, we're going to start there. We're going to be looking around different scriptures tonight, but start in the book of Psalms. Most amazing thing to me that has always amazed me. Um, when I started preaching, first time I ever preached, I was a teenager. I think I was. Uh, how old are you guys, Andy, Alex? You're 15? I think I was 15 the first time I ever preached. No, I was 14. I think it was 14. No, I was 15. Anyway, I think it was 15. And uh, they asked us to do a Wednesday night, uh, the teens, teen boys, and they asked us to give um, uh, 10 minutes each. There was three of us. So I said, why don't you give, actually, he said eight to 10 minutes. So if it's, it's a little less, that's fine, you know. Uh, but uh, don't go over 10 because we only had you know that much time. So I got my Bible out and I put together, I had a good idea, put a message together, wrote about 10, 12 pages freehand. Man, it was like just a whole bunch. And I was like, I don't know if I can get this down to, 10, to under 10 minutes, but I'm going to try. So that night, got up there, it was my turn. My, my buddy, a couple of my buddies preached and I got up last. And No, I got up second. I'm sorry, I got up second. And I started preaching, went through my, my notes and preached what I had to preach, and I got done, amen, and um, took five minutes, 12 pages, five minutes, I was done, and I was like, what in the world? But um, ever since that time, you know, when you start preaching, you start, putting, you start putting together and formulating, you get ideas for sermons as you're going through your day sometimes, and, and there's always stuff going on out in the world that reminds you of stuff, and when you come together, and then it's amazing how sometimes... You have an idea of something and how God puts everything together. Uh, tonight, or uh, this afternoon, I got, you know, pastor called me and said, hey, you think you can uh, bring a message tonight? And I said, sure. Amen. The Bible says always, always be ready. So um, I was ready to give an answer for the hope that is in me, as the Bible says. And uh, so I told him absolutely. And so I had a me I put him, sat down and put a message together today, not knowing exactly what was going on, but... Um, Everything he said at the beginning of the service and a lot of the songs that we preached all kind of dovetail together. And I love how the Lord does that. He does that a lot. Turn to uh, Psalm chapter 34, where we're at. Psalm 34. Psalm 34. And we're going to begin reading in verse number 17. Verse number 17, Psalm 34, 17, the Bible says, The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. Verse 18 says, The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Verse 19, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Amen. What a blessing to know the, that we have our Lord there that's always ready for us. Um, I titled the message, Problem Solver. I know we have a lot of problems. Everybody's got problems, amen? And uh, one of the things that my dad um, taught me through the years, I just, uh, he, my dad was a problem solver. A lot, of, a lot of dads are. A lot of dads are. They want to they solve the problem. They want to get a figure. My dad always found a way to solve problems. I don't know how he did it. Um, uh, he, he was a jack of all trades. He knew how to do, he was a mechanic for 40 years, but he knew how to do woodworking and electrical stuff. He taught me a lot of stuff and, and taught me how to use tools, taught me how to do all that stuff, taught me how to fish and shoot and all kinds of stuff throughout my life. But, um, you know, now uh, I look at something and I can see, you know, if something needs fixed or repaired or, or built. Uh, I can do those things all because of the things my dad taught me. And, and over the years, whenever there was a problem in the house or there was a problem with the house, my dad... Uh, would fix it, and I'd go along, just tag along, and and uh, and watch how he did it sometimes, and and uh, it was amazing to me. But he was a problem solver. My dad was, 
and I'm thankful for that. Um, but, uh, and, and I'm thankful for all the things that he taught me. But uh, sometimes there are problems that we come across in life, and now I'm talking about in, 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 with my dad, it was always things that we could take care of, amen? If there was a broken chair, then a, a wobbly table, something we could shore it up with a couple of extra screws or maybe make a new leg or something for it or things like that or, you know, these things that we could do materially. Uh, uh, but uh, sometimes you're running into problems in life that you can't, that you can't fix on your own. They're spiritual things and, and emotional things, and sometimes that happen to us. And the only one that can solve those problems is the Lord. And so I'm thankful that we have a God who loves us, and he gave us a book to show us how much he loved us, and he gave, gives us so much wisdom out of the book, uh, just like we read there. Verse 17, the righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, del heareth and delivereth, him out of, delivereth them out of all their troubles. Problems are universal, <laughs> amen? Um, everyone has them. Everyone's got problems. Um, doesn't matter who they are, from the youngest to the oldest, you know. Um, I was just, uh, last night, I was, uh, I, was, <laughs> I was on my phone, and I couldn't sleep. I, I went to sleep, and I woke up, I don't know when it was, but I, and I couldn't sleep. So I was, picked up my phone, and I started reading uh, some things on Facebook and stuff, and I came across this one video that somebody shared. I don't know who it was, but it was this girl. She was just crying. She was probably about, I don't know how old she was, maybe Sadie's age, maybe a little younger, I don't know, but uh, maybe a little older, probably maybe, maybe more towards Sela. But anyway, she was in the backseat of her car, crying her eyes out now you know and, and and as mother with the mother's heart you see your daughter just just bearing her soul crying her heart the first thing you want to do is of course pull your phone out and start recording right so this is what this mother did she starts recording her daughter her daughter's sitting there in the backseat just crying and she goes tell me what the problem was and it looks like they're sitting right outside of the school and the girl started crying, and, and she, goes, she goes, I got in the car, and my, her brother didn't want to give her a hug and a kiss. And it broke her heart. So she's crying, I just wanted to give him a kiss. And her brother's like, no. <laughs> her brother's sitting, and she, you pan over to the, to the brother. The brother's sitting like, yeah, I don't even care. <laughs> he didn't even care. But she is just having a meltdown because she didn't get any. She jumped in. The, it was after school. I guess she'd been thinking about her brother all day. She loved her, her brother. She jumped in the car, and then he was like, get away from me. And that broke her heart. <laughs> so, she's, so she's just having a meltdown. It was the worst thing ever in her entire life. And uh, so, you know, it was, it was kind of funny when you think about that. But you think when we're young, you know, little things like that, or when you're young, we do, we do have those meltdowns, amen, things, things like that. As you get older, we have all these different, so everybody's got problems, no matter how old you are to how old young you are. They, everyone has them. They're universal. The, the problem is, as, as adults or, or as older folks, we get, the older we get, we start to, start, start to try to solve our problems by ourselves on our own. There's a lot of people that, that use others to help them solve their problems. Like they'll seek professional help, amen. Um, there's a, there was a talk show host uh, that used to, used to be on, he's not, doesn't have a show anymore, but every, I think uh, my dad used to watch him, and every single guest that he had on at late night, 11 o'clock, 11.30, whatever it was, every single guest that he had come on, he asked them the same question, and he said, are, do you live in, he'd ask him a couple questions, do you live in L.A., are you in L.A., yeah, yeah, I'm living here now, and his second question was, are you in therapy? Every single night, he'd ask, doesn't matter who the actor, actor was, he's like, oh, you live in L.A.? Okay, so are you in therapy? Are you in therapy yet? And almost every one of them were like, yeah, yeah, I am. <laughs> they're all in, they're, it, it cracked me up. But, um, people are, would go to somebody to try to find help for the problems that they're going through. And, but here's the thing. The, the only one we need to go to is God, amen? God is the supreme problem solver. And the, the great thing about that is he, he never fails. God never fails. So I'll look at just a few things tonight, and uh, we're going to jump around to some scriptures, but I'm, we're going to look at just five things that I th look at. Hopefully it'll be a help to us tonight. Romans chapter 6 and verse number 23. Some of you already know that. It's a passage of scripture. Um, probably can quote it. Amen. Um, it was one of the first ones that I learned when I started uh, learning the Romans road. Uh, 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 Romans 6.23 being one of the parts of that. Amen. So I think the, the, when we look at problems, everybody's got problems. And everybody in the world, every human being on there, the first problem that you run into, the first problem we all have is a problem of sin. <laughs> the problem of sin. Amen. Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. 
But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Everybody has sin. Sin has become, you know what? Sin became man's number one problem when he first became disobedient there uh, to God, there in the garden. Thanks, Adam. He couldn't say, and man, after that, man could not save himself, and, and uh, angels couldn't do it. They can't atone for our sins. The only one that could do that was Jesus Christ coming down uh, to give his life for us and Praise God, that's exactly what he did. Christ paid the death penalty for the sin of all mankind, and anyone and everyone who receives him as Savior uh, and Lord will be saved. This is the, the, the basis of everything that any church, any good, solid, Bible-believing, independent Baptist church should do, is preach the gospel. Let people know there's a problem of sin, and you need to know that Jesus died on that cross, and so, so you could have eternal life. That's what we do. That's what we're supposed to do. Amen. Going out and being a witness to everybody. Um, when we were, uh, the other night, we were coming home. Well, where were we coming home from? I don't remember. But we, uh, we were, uh, I guess, from um, something. And uh, we stopped to get uh, uh, a drink over there. And uh, I gave the kids a little bit of money. They went in to get boba. They love to get boba, right? And what was the name of that place right by your house? Kung Fu, Kung Fu Tea, something like that. Anyway, they went in there. I, didn't, I was just chilling in the car. It was raining outside, so I was just waiting. Kids all ran in to get something to drink. They come back. Alex comes back and says, hey, Brother Ed, do you have a track? I said, yeah, absolutely. So I had tracks in my car and got it, gave him one and ran inside. I'm, I, and I think that's awesome that he came back and you had somebody to give that to. Amen? Hopefully that you did. Or, and, uh, but so that's a good thing. That's a good thing to be handing these things out. That's why, you know, what did you say you bought? What did Pastor say? There's like 10,000 of these or something like that? Um, that's, these should, you should get real sloppy with these. Amen. Uh, when, I, when I would go uh, to the hospital in, uh, in Farmington, when I go visit people, uh, and the hospital had all kinds of little waiting rooms and, uh, and little places. And outside, they had little benches and stuff. I just put three or four just there, everywhere, everywhere, everywhere I went. I just left them there. And, uh, and they, whether they got cleaned up, thrown away, whatever, they were there, and somebody would find them. You never know what God's going to do with something like that. People need to know that there, there's a problem, and the problem they have is sin. The first one is we have the problem of sin, which we all know that on a Wednesday night, pretty much everybody understands that. So the next problem we'll look at is this problem that we all sometimes have a problem doing. Second Timothy chapter number 1. Second Timothy chapter number one. Verse number twelve. Second Timothy one twelve. Look what the Bible says. For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able. To keep that which I have, what's that word? Committed. committed unto him against that day. Committed unto him against that day. Many Christians today, let me say this, it's, it's sad, but many Christians today fail to receive the promises and the blessings of God that God wants to pour out into your life because you do not surrender. Because we haven't committed our, we say we're committed to the Lord. We say that we have a commitment to God, and we, but we're not really doing that. Surrender is total commitment of our will to God's will. And the surrendered ones, those that have surrendered their life to God, those are the ones, you'll see what God is blessing their life. And filled, uh, they're filled with the Holy Spirit, and they receive God's blessing, and they become, and not only that, they become a blessing to others. Uh, the people that you see, oh man, that guy is such a blessing. I, I think of... You know, the people, I, I, I text my friend, uh, Brother Arby Willett this week, told him I was praying for him, and, and uh, he texted me back and said, thankful, thankful, uh, thankful for me, and, and uh, told me he was praying for me too. He knew what was going on with what I'm, what I'm doing and seeking the Lord in, in my life, and it was a blessing. But, you know, it's amazing that, uh, you know, he, I just sent him a text, and, and who am I? I, I always think, I, like, I don't know, who, I'm just a weirdo from New Mexico, but and uh, and, and Arby Willett is a, is a national speaker, international speaker. He's preached all over the world, and yeah, he'll send a text. To, I sent a text to him. He sent a text right back to me, and uh, just to, and it was a blessing to. But the thing is, is that he has always been a blessing to me. And I remember the very first time I used to, first time I saw him preach was at uh, Lancaster uh, Baptist Church. There were about four or five thousand people there in that auditorium, and I was way. We got there way late. We got there. We got there on time, which means we were way late. 
and uh, we got we had to sit way in the back, and um, I'm in the back, so I saw him way at the front preaching at the at the at the pulpit, and he looked like he was about this big, you know, because he was we we're so far away, and that's as far as I could see, and then I remember uh, that 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 same meeting I think is when Pastor Quinn was with me. He said, I'm going to ask him to come and preach at our church. And so he made his way. We threw there. And he asked, he said, he found him. He says, uh, would, you, would you consider coming and preaching at our church in Aztec, New Mexico? And Brother Willette looked at him and said, um, you know, I've, I've never preached in New Mexico. He said, I was supposed to preach at a church in Albuquerque one time, but they called and they canceled it. And I said, I've never been there. He said, sure, I'd love to come to your church and preach. And so we scheduled it a year out, and, and uh, I remember we had, we, 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 uh, that was the very first time we started a, a meeting at our church called the Iron Sharpeneth Iron Conference. And uh, we had Brother Willette coming, and, and I went with Pastor to go pick him up at the, at the airport and, and bring him back, and, and it was just amazing. We picked him up at the airport, we caught, got him back to the, to the church, and uh, I remember the, some, some of the guys that were with me at that conference before, we were standing on one end of our church foyer, and he walked in the other side with Pastor Quinn, and one of the guys was like, look, Brother Willette's here. I was like, yeah, I know. I, I went with him to get the, to the airport. They're like, no, but he's here in our church, like here. We're like, I can see him like right there, you know. And it was, so for us, it was kind of amazing. And, but when you got to know such a great preacher like Dr. Arby Willette, he was just as personable and, and, and uh, as, uh, as humble as he could be. An amazing preacher. And he was such a blessing to me. He's been such a blessing. And I told him in a text message that you've been a huge blessing to me all these years. And uh, he was a blessing to any pastor. And he was a great uh, blessing to Pastor, uh, pastor Quinn when we were there. And um, everywhere he goes, he's such a blessing. But you can see that when somebody has surrendered their life and committed their life to God's will, those surrendered ones are filled with the Holy Ghost. And they receive God's blessing. Then they become a blessing to others. It just happens that way. It just, it, it, they can't help it that to be a blessing to others because we're filled with the Spirit. The problem is we have too many Christians that don't want to surrender their life. The Bible says there in, first, in 2 Timothy 1.12 that we, uh, to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. What have you committed to God? Have you committed your life to God? Have you committed everything to God? Have you committed your, your job? Have you committed your family? Have you committed everything in your life to God? Uh, the talents that God is, we have a room full of people that are talented people, amen? And uh, all you, But have you committed those talents to God? We'll say, Brother Ed, I use them every single week and every single service, I, 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 I use it to serve. To, yes, I know. Praise God for that. But have you committed that talent to God? Or is it just because, well, Dad asked me to? It has to be something that you do. Uh, everybody needs to. We have a problem of surrender in our churches across the nation. There's people that go to church and they show up just like pastor preached tonight. They're there, but they're not there. They're there, but they haven't surrendered. They're there in, in physical form, but spiritually they're, they're, and, and, they're, and, and, and uh, they're, just, they're not there. Their heart is far from where they should be, as, as the Bible says. Amen. We have a problem with surrender. And then, which brings us to, this is kind of something we talked about before, but 2 Timothy, you're there in Timothy. Uh, uh, so look in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2. Look there just over, just a few, next chapter over in verse number 12. Because we have, there's a problem of suffering. There's the problem of sin. There's the problem of surrender. Then there's the problem of suffering. Uh, 2 Timothy 2.12 says, If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Hmm. We need to understand that we are going, there, there's going to be suffering when we're following the Lord, but it's there for a purpose. I preached a little bit about that a couple weeks ago. Suffering comes to everyone. It is the suffering endured for the cause of Christ that will bring the reward to us of, of reigning with him. When, when we get to heaven, we have all the rewards, amen. We suffer here. But suffering comes to everybody. And it's, sometimes it's physical suffering. Just this morning, uh, I got a text message from my, from my niece, my oldest niece, second oldest niece, something like that. Um, uh, her name is Darla. She texted me, and she said, uh, Uncle, can you pray for this girl that's in a hospital in Los Angeles? I, and I said, yeah, I can. I, and she said, she's battling cancer. She's just a little girl, and she's battling cancer. And I was like, I didn't know how she knew about it. 
And she said, I said, what's her name? She goes, her name's Delilah. I follow her on TikTok. She said, I follow her on TikTok. I was like, oh, okay, so that's how she knew. I didn't. But she said, I was just thinking about her, and she's struggling right now. I don't know if she's going to make it. Would you pray for her? Would you ask you, would you pray for her? Maybe ask your church to pray. And I was like, okay. So I looked up who that guy, Googled who this girl was, and saw that, yes, she is. She's, she's somewhere here in Los Angeles, and she is battling uh, uh, cancer. And uh, she's been in the, and from what I read, she's been in the hospital the last two weeks. And uh, just they're trying to keep, get her le- keep her levels up and all that kind of stuff. But she's suffering. And, she, and all the videos that are being posted are by her mom. And her mom's like, she had a better day today. And we're here at the hospital. This is our 12th day in the hospital. And she's, she said, just, you know, thank you for your prayers and the well wishes. And she's thanking everybody. But she's, she's there with her, with her daughter. And she's holding her. And she's, her daughter's just in pain. She's in all this pain because of the cancer. And she's, and she's suffering. And then her mom is suffering to go through that. And you think of these people that we know that are going through. And I, I feel that. You know, I watch my dad. And I just talked to you know, about my dad, who was my hero. He was big and strong, and he showed me how to do all the stuff in my life, to shoot guns and to, to fish and to, to gut fish and all that kind of stuff. He had how to build things, how to use tools and power tools and work on cars and change oil and change tires and change alternators. Show me all this stuff, and, and uh, he knew how, and then to watch when cancer got a hold of him, he got liver cancer. And, um, and what happened was it just ate away his, bo- his entire body the way God designed the body is to go fight infection. So his entire body went to fight this cancer, and it was a losing battle. The cancer was too fast moving, and they couldn't. But what happens is the Bible it uses up all of your fat cells for energy just to keep your body going. But then it's the, once that runs out, then it starts to use your muscle. And your muscles deteriorate because it's, it's pulling energy from there to try to battle this losing battle with this cancer. And I watched my dad just waste away. In six months, from the first time he got diagnosed in, in, in something like September, and he passed away in February of the next year, just a few months. He went so fast. And in the last couple of months, I took care of my dad. And I was there every single day, and I, and I tried to make it, have, get him some food, tried to help him eat. He could barely sometimes lift a spoon. And he, he was in bed most of the time, and he's just emaciated and skinny. His arms are skinny. And just looking at my dad, that's not the, the one that, that taught me all the stuff when I was young. But I was going to be there for him and help him. But I watched as the cancer just ate away at his body. And I hated that cancer. And I, and it, and it, and it, uh, I was so um, hurt to see that. And then when my dad finally did pass, God took him home. And one of the greatest things that I can say is that my la- the last the last doctor's appointment that I took my dad to, the one that I mentioned before I, in my preaching, when, I went to, when the doctor came out and looked at my dad and said, you have weeks to live. You don't have months. You have weeks. We got back in the car, and I'm driving my dad. I helped him get in the car. We're in my expedition. We're driving home. And he says, I'm hungry. He says, let's stop and get something to eat. This is when he could still walk, kind of. And I said, okay, there's a little, there's a little di- diner right here by the hospital. We pulled in the parking lot. And, he's, and we stopped, and I stopped the car and turned the key off. My dad's sitting there. And my dad says, you know, I had a good run. And he was quiet. I had a good run. I looked over him, and I know my dad, he was 70. 74, I think it was, 75. And I said, Dad, can I ask you a question? You know that you're not going to be here much longer. You know where you're going when you die. He says, I think I do. And I said, could I show you from the Bible? Could I take my Bible and show you right now how you can be sure? And he said, yes, I'd like that, son. So sitting in the parking lot of that little diner, I opened my Bible, and I leaned over, and I showed my Bible how to come to know Christ. And I prayed with him. And I heard my dad in his, in his weak and frail, broken voice there pray and ask God to come into his heart and be a Savior. Yeah. To be able to lead my dad to the Lord. Yeah. So on that day, when he did finally pass, it broke my heart, but I knew he was in heaven. People, there's surrender, and then there's 
suffering that comes. I'm glad that I surrendered my life to follow the Lord and they have the opportunity to help my dad come to know Christ when he was suffering. God has purpose in everything that he does. God has a purpose in what he allows. When, when suffering strikes, we must be prayerful, we must be patient, and we got to seek God's purpose and committing the keeping of our soul to him. 1 Peter 4.19 says this, Wherefore let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. Committing your souls to him. Through the suffering, there's a problem of suffering. Look in 2 Corinthians chapter number 6. Second Corinthians chapter number six and verse number ten. And, and I preached about this a couple weeks ago when we talked about sorrow is better than laughter. Or maybe it was last week, I don't remember. Second Corinthians six ten, the Bible says this as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. Yet listen to that again. As sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. As poor, yet making many rich. As having nothing yet possessing all things. There is a problem of sorrow. It comes. And sorrow is universal. Everybody will feel it at some time in their life. Bereavement, loneliness, disappointment, it comes to everybody. It comes to us all. Some become dependent and give up when that sorrow strikes. I have said many times when I lost my, my, uh, my sister, uh, uh, to uh, when she passed away she got, went into a diabetic coma and never came out and I was at, there at her, her, her bedside when she passed away and, I, and then when my, uh, my her husband um, right before she died her husband disappeared we lost track of him didn't know where he was and uh, couldn't find him and finally they found him he had fallen into an irrigation ditch when he was out partying one night and got swept down and they, ne they didn't find him for weeks and they finally did find him that was, a, that was a sad time. And then I was there for my sister to help her through that, but she, she never quite got over that. And then she went out and she just, she got into, she went on a binge and she went into a coma from that and never came out of that. And then she disappeared. I mean, she uh, passed on. And then with, with, after his disappearance, uh, she passed on. And then my sister Carol. And well, then I lost my niece, Charlotte. My niece, my niece Char. And then I lost my dad. And I lost my mom just this past Christmas. All these people that I've lost in the last seven years. It seems like every year is losing somebody. I look at, and I've said this before. I don't know how people who don't know Christ as their Savior get through those kinds of things. It's the only reason I got through all of that was because of the Lord. It's the only reason I could get through the sorrow and the things that were going on in my life was because I had a hand to hold on to, a divine power that I could tap into and that I could pray to God and ask Him to help me to get through those times when I was sorrowful, get through those times when I was hurting, get through those times when I needed something bigger than myself to hold on to. And that was God. And I had to remember, I surrendered my life to Him. And we need to surrender our lives to, to and He'll be there for us all the way. They're that problem of sorrow. Trust in the Lord in time of sorrow. He can help. He can help us the most. Amen. Through sorrow, here's what thing, and I said I preach this before. Through sorrow, God teaches us and He touches us and He directs and delivers those who cast their care upon Him. Over there, First Peter five seven. Amen. Cast your care upon God because he careth for you. He will show you and direct you and help you in the sorrowful times. Don't lose your focus on God. Keep your eyes on him and keep going forward through the problem of sorrow. And then look in 2 Corinthians, since you're there in chapter number 5. Just right there a little bit back. 2 Corinthians chapter number 5. Look at the verse number 14 and 15. 2 Corinthians 5, 14 and 15. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, 
that they which live should they which live should not henceforth sent henceforth live unto themselves but unto him which died for them and rose again professing christians professing christians people that say they are are children of god we have a problem with too many professing christians in our society today in our churches today that are living unto themselves the Bible says right there, we're not supposed to live unto ourselves. Right there in the verse, in black and white, you saw it, you read it. We're not to live unto ourselves. That Their time is, there's too many, uh, we have Christians today, their time is occupied with making more money and, and having a good time and, and uh, 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 not worrying about uh, spiritual things or, or what God thinks about their lives. Love for God and concern for others is lacking in those kinds of people. They're not filled with the Spirit. You don't see it oozing out of them. They're not a blessing to others, but they say they're a Christian. We have too many people across the, uh, across the uh, churches today that are like that. They're just showing up to church. And are they involved? Are they serving? Are they asking a preacher, what can I do every single week? Pastor, can I do something this week? Can I help you? Can I help with this? Can I, can I clean the church? Can I do this? Can I come this week and do something around the church? Wow, what an amazing thing would happen if all of, of our churches across the United States would have people that would, stay, would uh, commit their lives to come to, the, uh, to help the church every single week. Most of them just show up and then leave. Show up and then leave. They're there, but they're not there. Christians that are professing to be Christians. Our love for God is shown by doing His work through His power. Our love for God is shown by doing His work through His power, not our own power. He will go with us as we, hel as we help the needy. He will go with us as we visit the sick. He will go with us as we visit the lonely and share Christ with, uh, and, and those that we share Christ with, He will be there, amen, when, when we go out to share the, Christ, share, uh, the Lord and the, uh, the gospel with the lost. When we yield our best, God will do the rest. When we yield our best, God will do the rest. He is able and willing to solve every problem. He is the problem solver. Amen. We just need to trust in him. Amen. We have problem of sin. Every one of us. We have a problem of surrender. We need to make sure we're surrendered in every, each and every part of our life. We have a problem of suffering. Yes, I know that comes to everybody. And some, you might not have, have dealt with that. Uh, um, too much suffering in your life. But listen, a, the human condition, that's just something that's going to come to each one of us. The problem of sorrow. And then, of course, tonight, the problem of service. We have too many people that are not serving the way they should. They're showing up, and they're not committing themselves, and they're not. They're living unto themselves. The Bible says, for the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead, and that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth, not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which, rose, which died for them and rose again. Are you living unto God? Giving, here, giving your best, yield your best to God, and let God do the rest. He is the problem solver. He solves the problem of sin when, he gave, when, he, when Christ came and gave his life on the cross for us. He'll solve the problem of surrender when we give our lives and we commit ourselves the way that we're supposed to commit, the way he asks us to, the way the, way the word tells us to do it, commit to him. He'll solve the problem of suffering. He's always there for us to get, through, get us through those times and to hold on to him. He'll solve the problem of sorrow, the loneliness and the disappointments. All that comes to all people, but he will help us and, and he can, he's the one that can help us the most in those times. And then the problem of service, he's just asking, what have you done for me? There's a song, I don't know if it's in this hymnal, but there's a song called, uh, uh, oh, I can't remember how it goes now. Uh, no, not, that's a good one, though. Have I done my best for Jesus? That's a good one. But I was thinking of, um, um, oh, I can't remember it now. But uh, anyway, the song goes, uh, basically goes on and says that um, uh, I, I gave my life for thee. What hast thou done for me? And you ever think about that? We sing the song. Would you ever think about Christ standing in front of you saying, I gave my life for you. What have you done for me? God's our problem solver. He's there. He's going to help us. But we need to commit our lives to him. And this is the reason. The reason is because there are people out that are dying all around us. 
I'm thankful that Alex came in that day and said, hey, Brother Ed, you got a track I can give? I said, yeah. Pastor said he gave out a track earlier today. Amen. I've given out tracks. I've left them at different places. This is what we need to do. Amen. Get them out there. You should have tracks with you at all times. Amen. You never know when you're going to have an opportunity. Get, as Pastor Quinn used to say, get sloppy with your tracks. Just put them out everywhere. I had a guy in our church that used to go to uh, uh, um, Sonic, the Sonic drive-in. And uh, you pull up, you know, they've they got the menu there, and they got the little card reader there. He would take a track, he would fold it in half, and he'd stick it in there and leave it. So the next person that came had to pull it out so that they could use it. He did that everywhere. He, he get every, every drive through every drive-thru he went, he gave it to, if there was two windows, he gave one at each window. I tried to do that, and sometimes I forget. A lot of times I forget. But why can't we do that? Why are we scared? <laughs> Let's go out and, and, and get the gospel out. God is going to help us. You say, oh, there's, there's, there may be problems, yes, but God is the problem solver. Every head bowed and every eye closed.